So the next thing we're going to do is write a slightly more complex program and what's going to make it different from the other ones we've made so far is that it is going to include code from another file. So we're breaking our code up so that we can import functions and reuse code if needed. Let's look at our final product here. First of all, we'll run it. Here's what we're going for. I'm going to print a hex value and then we're going to print the value of a register. We're going to load the register so we know what the value is and then we'll print it out to make sure that our print hex function works. So what does the main code look like? Program1.asm. Pretty short compared to some of the other stuff we've done. Really simple. Basically we set everything up, we move our string into the source index register or SI register, then we call print string. Where is that defined? Well, we'll get there. Then we move AB12, which if you were paying attention, that is what printed out as the hex number in the example. So we load that into CX and then we just call print hex. Then that's it, the program is done. We define our string and then we include these two functions. So these are actually in a different file, print hex and print string. And that's it for our bootloader, nice and short. Only 17 lines, very manageable. If you'll look, we're using percent %include and then the name of the file. And this file name is relative to your current position on the operating system, so you can use dot dot slash, whatever you need. It's NASM that's going to go find the file and then just paste it in basically. So relative paths are okay for this. We'll exit out. Let's start with the simpler of the two and one we've pretty much already done, print string. So here's a function. Looks familiar, right? Basically, we just use a label and then we use call to go jump over to that label and then the special thing about the call is it pushes your current position, like your instruction position, onto the stack. So when you call ret or return at the very end, it jumps back to where you made the call from. So we say call print string and it comes in here. And uh, another important thing, this is optional but it's definitely good practice to at the beginning use push a which means push all registers onto the stack and then when you're done do pop a before you return this way you're preserving the exact state of the registers all of them uh, before the person called your function so if you mess with any registers it doesn't matter what you do do as you please with the registers they will all be restored and you won't mess up anything that they were doing now of course from the calling side if you're calling a function you shouldn't assume that your registers aren't going to get changed but when you're writing the function be a nice developer, push, and then pop the registers so you don't mess anything up. Now, I'm sure it's less efficient to do this, so it may depend on what your requirements are, but it's definitely nice to know it's an option. All right, so we get into the actual code of our function here. What, we're, uh, what are we actually doing? Well, we're going to go by our old standard 0xe in the AH register. Looks like we're going to call the print character BIOS call yet again. And then I use these dot preceded labels as kind of an inner jump, a jump within the function. And I noticed that seemed to be the best practice from some of the code snippets that I was reading as I was researching this. So basically, without the dot, that's something that you're going to want to call, call print string. But you're not going to call dot next character. This is an internal reference, and that way you don't get it mixed up. Another thing to be careful with is don't accidentally reuse one of these dot label names. You have to remember that NASM is literally just pasting everything into one big file and then assembling. So if you're defining a dot done label in this print string method, which I actually did, then you accidentally define a dot done label as well in the print hex, then how is NASM going to tell the difference? There will be two of the exact same label defined in the file. And I'm not entirely sure. I think it might throw an error. If not, it would probably do something funky like just jump to the first one or whatever. If you want to try it, find out. But I would suggest giving unique names to your labels whenever you can. If you want to guarantee it, you could even come up with the convention of doing dot name of function underscore whatever the label is. So this could be dot print underscore string underscore next character. But it's so long and this is such a simple program that I just gave descriptive labels as best I could and made sure that they didn't overlap. Anyway, we get into here and basically we move the address of the string into AL, or I'm sorry, we move the character at the address of the SI register into AL. You'll remember that when we called this, we set SI to the proper address of the string we're trying to print. We make sure we're not at the end of the string by comparing with AL and zero. If we have a zero byte in the SI register or the current location of the SI register, we have reached the end of the string, so we can jump to dot string done, which is just going to pop everything in return. Otherwise, print that character out, increment the SI register to move to the next character, and then we're just going to jump back up to next character and do it all over again. So we've seen this before in a bootloader 
but we've not seen it in this way where it's reusable code. We can include this file and just call print string whenever we want to. And basically we never really have to write this again if we're in 16-bit mode in the bootloader. But of course we can modify this for 32-bit protected mode when we get there, no need to worry about it. Either way, it's pretty cool to be able to write reusable code now. Let's check out the other file, print hex. So this one's a lot longer, but don't be intimidated. Basically the only argument is you set CX to whatever hex value you want to print. And then we have to figure out how to convert that hex value into characters that we can print to the screen. So for print X, we push A, we talked about that. And then we're gonna just print zero X, which is simple. You just move zero X E for the print character, literally move zero in, print it. Then you literally move, uh, well you reset A H just in case. Then you move X in and then you print the X. So we just printed zero, we printed X. Now we gotta do a little bit of messing around with the value of the CX register to get it to print out properly because if you're printing 0x ABCD, well, first of all, 0x ABCD itself is not an ASCII code, or maybe it is, but it's only gonna be one to two characters. You're gonna to have to shift everything around. Basically, there are four bytes there if you have 0x ABCD. So first we're gonna print the A part, which means that that third byte from the right needs to be shifted all the way over so it's the only one there. That might not make a lot of sense, but let's look at exactly how we're doing this. First of all, we're gonna preserve the value of CX. We don't want to mess up CX. We're going to tear this number up as we make these operations happen. So we want to safely move it to a different register where we can really get to work. But we're going to want to get back to the original value eventually. So move CX into AX and we're going to do all our work in AX. Now we're going to AND AX and 0x F000. So if you're familiar with hex, you'll know that F is 1111 and then the rest are obviously straight zeros. In this way, we are selecting that third byte in and everything else is going to become a zero no matter what because one and zero is zero and zero and zero is zero. It's a good way to clear everything out with a binary operation. So now we're going to shift right AX by 12. So that's gonna take this X and move it over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, so that really we just have that zero X F value, whatever is in there. And with this, we call our print byte method. We're working with AX, which is four bytes. We've moved it over so that AX equals 0x000F with our shift right. Essentially, we have masked the value of AX to the third byte, and we've moved it all the way over so that whatever that third byte was is actually in the zeroth byte position. And now we're gonna call print byte. Let's jump down there and check out what that does. So print byte is going to figure out, is this a number or a letter? So we're going to compare AL, which is supposed to be what we're printing, to 0xA. Just by the rules of hex, we're really just comparing a number. So we're saying if it's less than 10, then it's a number. If it's greater than or equal to 10, it's a number. Or I'm sorry, it's a letter. But when we convert this number, when we convert 0xA into an ASCII character, the character code for A starts at a completely different position than the zero. So zero through nine are gonna have their place that we jump to or that we add to to get the correct character code and A through F are going to have a different one. So for our logic, we detect if it's a letter, in other words, if it's zero X A through zero X F, we are going to add the value of the character code capital A. You could also use lowercase a. It depends which one you want to output, uppercase or lowercase. Then we have to subtract 10 because a equals 10. So what are we really saying here? If you add the character code for a to 0xa, then you really have this character code plus 10, plus the value of 0xa, an actual number. So we need to subtract that 10 to get back to zero. So if this were 0x0 and you add the character code a to it, you just get the character code for A, which is what we want. If you had 0xB and you subtracted 10, you would just have 0x1. So you would have the character code for A plus one, which is B. Hopefully that makes sense. Maybe I made it worse, I don't know. Then we're done, so we jump to the end. For numbers, it's a lot easier. And maybe I should have said this one first. Really, all you're going to do if it's a number is just add the character code for zero. No adjustments needed. 0x0 plus the character code for zero gives you the character zero. 0x1 plus the character code for zero gives you zero plus one in line gives you the character code for one. Maybe it makes sense, maybe it doesn't give me a break. If it doesn't make sense, maybe ask a question in the comments and I'll try to clarify, whatever. Either way, 
Once all that's over with, we just move h 0 x e, which is the print character command, and we do int 10 to print it, and we return. So that's a lot. What are we doing here? We basically mask out the byte. We called our print byte. For byte 2, we're going to do the same thing. I'll go through it quickly. We copy the original value of cx into ax. So we're refreshing the value with what was called when they said call print x. Then we're going to and ax with 0x0f00. Zero 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 zero. And I padded the 0 so that you could see that we're moving from that first f over to the second f. And now we're masking that second byte in. Then we're going to shift right, this time only 8 before we did 12, 4 per byte. Now we only have to go over two places, so we do shift right 8, and we call print byte again. For byte 1, it's similar. We refresh the value. We mask AX with 00F0, so we're really just selecting that second one from the right. And then we're going to shift right 4 so that it's right at the end there. It's just that byte, and we call print byte. Finally, byte 0 is probably the easiest one. Just refresh the value and it so that we get rid of all of the unnecessary data to the left of it. No shift required and we just call print byte. And that yields what we saw. I will run the program one more time. It prints 0xAB12. If we want to modify and make sure it really works, we can change the value that we're putting into CX to beef. Why not? It is valid. What happens now? It works. It's screaming at us, but it works. 0x beef. So that is our entire example program. Not as fun as I thought it would be. Next up, we'll do some debugging.